Why does the company behind the second best-selling video game of all time not value PC gamers enough by releasing their games simultaneously? To find the answer, we need to delve into Rockstar's past. After GTA 3, Y City and San Andreas were released on consoles, it typically took around 7 to 8 months for the company to port them to PC. The same timeline applied to GTA 4 which launched in April 2008 for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 but didn't reach PC until December of that year. Also, episodes from Liberty City, which included GTA 4's story expansions, followed the usual pattern, coming to PC a few months after its console release. However, GTA 4 The Complete Edition, which included the base game and both expansions, was released simultaneously on PC. But what about other games in the series? Titles like Liberty City Stories, Y City Stories and Chinatown Wars were never ported to PC. GTA 5 was released on two different console generations before finally hitting PC in April 2015, nearly two years after its initial launch. And GTA Trilogy The Definitive Edition released simultaneously as well. However, when it comes to non-GTA IPs, the situation looks kinda messy. Midnight Club received the worst treatment with the majority of the series skipping PC and the one that released is currently unavailable for purchase. Bully took two years to reach PC after its initial release and surprisingly, Max Train 3 was launched close to the console version. But other games like Rockstar Table Tennis, The Warriors and Red Dead Redemption 1 never received the PC port, but the latter is about to change. Speaking of Red Dead Redemption, its sequel became available on PC a year after its console release, but this raises the question. Do these PC delays mean the games are released in a polished state? Usually multiple Rockstar Studios handle the task of porting games over to PC, however given the technical state of the games at launch, Rockstar's efforts often do not justify the extended wait. While a game like Max Payne 3 which was a smaller title compared to the company's other games had a decent PC port, titles like Bully and a few GTA games needed more development time. Although, it's worth remembering a couple of things. Firstly, in an open-world title, numerous elements require extensive polishing efforts. Secondly, unlike the fixed nature of consoles, the PC platform has a massive variety of hardware configurations making optimization a challenging and time-consuming task. With that being said, Bully in particular was launched in a buggy state, and some of its problems still persist. More than that, ever since the release of Windows 10 in 2015, the game has become increasingly unstable and hard to play. Sadly, the company hasn't addressed these issues yet, but fortunately, mothers have stepped in to fix these problems, ensuring that Bully can still be played properly in 2024. Despite all of that, with GTA 4, Rockstar Games managed to release one of the most infamous PC ports of all time. This game not only suffered from extreme technical flaws but also featured some odd DRM measures to prevent piracy, which in some cases prevented legitimate owners from playing the game. Calling GTA 4's PC version unpolished is an understatement as it was almost unplayable. Performance issues were rampant and sometimes the game wouldn't even boot. Despite some updates and improvements, later when episodes from Liberty City finally released on PC, it still wasn't the polished experience one would expect from Rockstar Games. Fortunately, the company learned from GTA 4's mistakes and delivered a decent port with GTA 5's long-awaited PC release. Moving on, while Red Dead Redemption 2 lacked some features and optimizations, it was still miles better than Rockstar's previous efforts. It offered a far superior experience compared to the console version with higher resolution, smoother frame rates, and detailed visuals. Just when the quality of Rockstar's PC ports started to look promising, 2021 brought us the release of GTA Trilogy The Definitive Edition. While Grove Street Games handled the task of remastering the games, it seems like there was minimum effort put into quality assurance testing and as a result, every version across the board was heavily flawed. The PC version in particular suffered from unacceptable issues such as massive frame rate drops on some of the most powerful systems of the time. Additionally, just a couple of months before the release of Red Dead 2, the company introduced Rockstar Games Launcher to PC. The primary purpose of this new launcher is to increase Rockstar's earnings on PC while combating piracy through license checks and account linking. Also, additional DRM methods such as constant internet connection are implemented within their games to further complicate matters for everyone. Initially, Red Dead 2 was a launcher exclusive, meaning it was only available through the Rockstar Games launcher and the Epic Games Store. It stayed that way for about a month before finally arriving on Steam. 
An extra month of waiting is nothing compared to a year of console exclusivity, yet when it comes to GTA Trilogy The Definitive Edition, Rockstar made it exclusive to their own launcher for over a year before releasing it on Steam or Epic Games Store. Some might argue that launcher exclusivity isn't a big deal. After all, the game is available on PC, so why should anyone care about which store is selling it? Here's why it matters. Steam is the most popular platform on PC, offering users tremendous service and value with features like forums, marketplace, workshop for mods and more. Many gamers have built their entire gaming library on Steam over the years, forcing them to split this uniformity in favor of one game that will ultimately become available on their platform of choice usually doesn't bode well. In some cases, PC gamers wouldn't even consider a game being released on PC if it's not available on Steam. This results in people either skipping games or pirating them, which means lower PC sales. While video game piracy has always been a challenge on PC, gamers will usually support developers that respect and value their community. Unfortunately, this cannot be said about either Rockstar Games or their parent company, Take-Two Interactive. For example, their stance toward GTA's modding scene has been awful, to put it mildly. Take GTA Underground as an example. A mod that used to merge the maps of the 3D era GTA games into one was taken down due to the DMCA claim issued by Take-Two Interactive. The same was almost about to happen to Open 4 a single-player modification tool. At first, Take-Two Interactive sent a cease and desist letter to the creators of the tool because they felt it could pose a threat to GTA Online. But after a massive backlash from the fans, Rockstar intervened and reached a middle ground with the publisher, which meant people shouldn't use the mod to alter anything related to GTA Online, but they're free to use it in the single-player mode. Later on, the company targeted the most prominent group of modders known for their work on 5M a popular online mod that some might know from the role-playing servers. This time, instead of threatening them, Rockstar acquired the team, which was surprising to everyone. However, since this acquisition has taken place, there have been no significant updates to the mod, leading some fans to question the company's true intentions behind this purchase. Did Rockstar simply purchase the team to eliminate the competition, or do they plan to officially monetize it to expand their ever-growing money-printing machine, which is GTA Online? To maximize profits, Rockstar exploits players' fear of missing out by employing a strategy known as double dipping. They initially released their games exclusively on consoles, sidelining the PC platform. Console gamers or those who own multiple gaming systems typically purchase these games right away. Meanwhile, PC gamers are forced to either endure a lengthy wait or in some cases buy a console just to play the latest Rockstar title. Once Rockstar satisfies their console sales targets, they eventually release the game on PC, creating two primary groups of buyers, the patient gamers who avoided the spoilers and the eager fans purchasing the game for a second time. Even data suggests that a significant percentage of Rockstar's players have owned their titles multiple times. Furthermore, Rockstar generates substantial revenue through GTA Online and its aggressive monetization practices. In addition, they introduced a subscription service called GTA Plus, which offers some freebies and access to basic features that arguably should have been free to begin with. Ironically, GTA Plus isn't available on PC since it's locked behind the expanded and enhanced edition, the console-exclusive fourth re-release of the game. The truth is, Rockstar Games has always prioritized consoles over PC, treating the latter as a secondary market. A former employee once revealed that Rockstar considers PC less of a priority, focusing on PlayStation first, then Xbox, and finally PC. While this approach might have made sense during the seventh generation of consoles when developing for multiple platforms was more complex, it seems increasingly unjustifiable today given the architectural similarities between current-gen consoles and PCs. Despite the technical challenges of developing games for PC, it's hard to believe that the creators of the second best-selling video game of all time can't afford to expand their teams for a simultaneous PC release. Some speculate that Take-Two Interactive is the driving force behind these decisions limiting Rockstar's resources and fueling these profit-driven strategies. I'll leave it up to you to decide if this is right or wrong, but in today's gaming landscape, simultaneous multi-platform releases are the norm. While GTA 6 might be one of the most complex games ever made, that doesn't justify treating PC gamers as second-class citizens. Rockstar earns a lot from GTA Online, though their profit seems to be slowly declining, but claiming a lack of resources for simultaneous releases sounds made up. Unfortunately, the company capitalizes on fear of missing out to exploit double-dippers, a strategy they've employed for years and will likely continue to use. 
Rockstar and Take-Two, like many other businesses, love making money, but it seems they're treating the PC platform and its players as mere numbers. After all, they can earn more from double, triple, and even quadruple deepers, so why not? To simply answer the question, the reason Rockstar neglects PC gamers is greed. PC gamers are being sidelined not by necessity but by design. So the choice is yours. Wait for the PC port or purchase a console which could cost you upwards of $300 MSRP. As a PC gamer, would you be willing to pay a huge sum to experience Rockstar's next game firsthand, or would you rather wait for the inevitable PC release? Share your thoughts in the comments below and if you enjoy this type of video, please subscribe, drop a like and let me know. Thanks for watching, I'm the Folk, signing out.